the future author of The Body and Grace, and the former Miss Rhode Island. <laughs> is asked to help those in Rwanda who are suffering with the lingering anguish of the 1994 genocide. Because the impact of her work was so profound, she was asked to return again and again, becoming a folk hero to the country for the thousands of orphans and widows whose lives she turned around during her 17 trips to Rwanda. She was given the Jet Lad Survivor Award. <laughs> her reputation spread so that she was often the first one asked to come after a mass shooting or after a terrible flood or other disaster. And she really made a difference in those places, but she didn't stop there. She didn't just tap on a band-aid and leave. She would work with the local community so that there was a real resilience in the community as things went on. And so it's not surprising that after Sandy Hook, <coughs> that Nick Ortner, she was the person that Nick Ortner turned to when that happened in his community. And she made a tremendous difference in the entire community, but I'm just gonna tell one story. And that was a boy named JT who was 12 when his six-year-old brother was murdered. And JT was so angry and so broken that he did not return to school for two months. His mother had responded really well to tapping, but JT was not interested. Lori was brought in, and she had just the resource. When she was in Rwanda, she had developed a project like Rwanda, and in that, she took young people who had seen the worst, the worst that human beings could see, and come out to the other side and was able to put them together with other young people who also had gone through trauma. So Lori set up a Skype call between JT and two of the Project Light ambassadors, as they were called. And in their long meeting, they went very deep, they tapped, they bonded. And the next day, JT went back to school to give a talk to his fellow students about why it is important to care about people who have gone through trauma no matter where they live. To make a full circle, JT started a nonprofit foundation, and that foundation funded some of the ambassadors to go to university. Of the 12 initial Project Light ambassadors going all the way back to 2011, many of them now have their own children. One of them is named after Lori. And Lori wrote to me, too bad for her. <coughs> the Rwandans have difficulty with their elves. <laughs> So she is called Rory. <laughs> so in honor of that local dialect, Rory Raiden.
Also, I have a new title. It's called Misdemeanor. Uh, obviously, I can't do this work by myself, and I want to thank David Feinstein for always being there when I needed him in the field for advice or for research uh, information. Um, I want to thank ASEP, obviously, who supported my work along the way. Um, Nick Ortner, obviously, for bringing me to Sandy Hook. Uh, then I spent, I, sp I went there for uh, what I thought was three weeks. I stayed for three years. And then I went on to Parkland uh, for another two years. Um, and uh, where I worked with Dr. Peter Stapleton and uh, the Heart of the Mind Heart Connect Foundation, Kate Helder, uh, and we have been working with Aboriginal and refugee communities uh, since 2017. Uh, I also, of course, need to thank all my donors and all the volunteers who showed up, but most importantly, the people who trusted us to partner with them in their healing. Um, in each community I've gone into, I have tried to find the gaps in bringing EFT uh, more credibility and to more professional institutions. And that's why I've um, scaled and replicated training for healing arts uh, professionals and mental health professionals. Um, and in each of those locations, we've been able to work with community leaders, uh, educators, parents, and really brought this to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mental health professionals. So we are bridging that gap now in bringing mental health professionals into this field of knowing that physiological regulation is the key to healing trauma, period, final. End of story. And we have Stephen Porges, who is uh, leading the, the, the fight, if you will, to understand that this is what needs to happen. Brain dysfunction needs to be regulated uh, with our physiology so that we can connect our heart-brain-body connection, which I believe heart wires us for divinity because when our hearts and our brains and our bodies are regulated, we have access to creative problem solving, intuition, inner wisdom, connectedness, transcendency, that spirituality that will evolve our planet and hopefully create global healing. So what I've learned along the way in following my heart uh, is that we are heart-wired for divinity. I've learned that um, it takes a village, for sure, and that if we nurture our next generation of young people, we can create global healing on the planet. Uh, what I've found now is that the biggest gap in service for mental health professionals and healing arts professionals is supporting them in mastering therapeutic presence. So that is my next frontier. Uh, I hope you will check out that program um, because it really is my passion now, allowing mental health professionals to feel safe in their own bodies when they are holding space for the biggest traumas on our planet. And I'd like to invite you now to um, put your hands on your hearts, if you will, and close your eyes for just a moment and take that full breath and imagine an infinity circuit that connects your heart with what I call the divine one heart. Knowing that whatever you choose to heal in yourself sets up a resonance field for that healing to unfold in our world so that your greatest service work in the world truly is being in service to your own healing. And from that place, touching into whatever grace you might be experiencing in this moment as we connect our hearts together in this vision for healing our world. And let's all collectively send that grace to people who are suffering in the world. 
And as we send that grace, let us open to the field of all possibilities for healing, one by one, heart by heart, and let's really ground into the possibility that this can happen in our lifetime. And I thank you so much. And this award means this will be the most important professional award I ever received. So I thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone's here tonight, sorry.